Hey y'all, this is Ginger DeVries, guest number 56 of the podcast encouraging you today to use your position to broadcast God's love. All things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who's called according to his purpose. God has sent Jesus to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives. Freedom, my friends. That season may not be the thing that you wanted necessarily, but God needs you to learn something. God has given her an ability to help people change the narrative of their life. If you do not genuinely believe in prayer, then there's no point in doing it. Hindsight with God, you understand, but yeah. In the middle of stuff, you just got to hang on and trust him. We're not supposed to do for God. We're supposed to be for God. The doing is a side effect. Mm -hmm. God is able to bless you abundantly. If he can take care of the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, so more can he do for you. My family and my husband and I sat in the store before we opened and we just prayed over the store and that we would unapologetically show the love of Christ. It's all going to work together for your good. If you love God, you just continue to stay humble, seek God, and it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. God's word says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We pray this episode is an encouragement to you to go out and use your position to broadcast his love. From Scotto Albritton Studios, here's your host, Ricky. Hey everyone, and welcome to Broadcast His Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name because it's all about Jesus, living life on purpose for Him. And I love that you're here. I'm thankful that you're here. And this is a different episode for us today. So I've gotten together with some of my friends and family. We have put together a workbook. And this has been a team effort because most of the scriptures that were put into this workbook were from former guests who shared the verses that were encouraging them in that season. And I do want to tell you that this workbook and this audio recording are not going to be parallel. They're not going to be exactly the same. So as you're doing this workbook, if you want to listen to the audio as well, uh, just see this audio recording as a bonus. Just see the audio recording as something to prepare your heart Because our goal is to encourage you to broadcast God's love no matter your position. So if you go to the description of this podcast, you will get the link to be able to download this free printout. And I encourage you to print it off and fill it out because you will be writing your vision and you will hopefully, Lord willing, be taking action on what God has called you to do. In the beginning of this workbook, I have written a little something for you. And this is something that has been prayed over and written for you to encourage you to broadcast his love no matter your position. So I just want to read this to you right now and know that God loves you and he's with you and he sees you and he just wants you to choose him. And so my prayer for every podcast that we do is for the person listening. And so this writing is for you. I pray that during this time, you are drawn closer to Christ to then go out and do what you do for Jesus because of the overflow of your heart. So God is good and it's a joy to be able to share this information with you. I've had it on my computer for a long time. So here we go. How to broadcast his love. It's not about your plans, but his plans for your life. And we know that from Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Doesn't Jeremiah 29, 11 sound marvelous? God made you in his image and he has plans for you. As image bearers of Christ, we all have unique gifts, talents, and abilities. Think of it like this. Your God-given gifts are like your superpowers. To put it even more simply, your God-given gifts are the things that you do well that others have a harder time with. As the body of Christ, we have been given different gifts that we are supposed to put into action in our daily living for the Lord, for His glory. Romans 12, 6 through 8 in the NIV translation. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, 
then prophecy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. What I didn't understand as a child, and I hope to make very clear to you here in this workbook, is that God has unique plans for you, Jeremiah 29, 11. But we must seek him first and commit our daily actions to him. Matthew 6, in the NLT translation, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Proverbs 16, 3, NLT translation, Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Don't you want to succeed? But how do you do it? Simply put, you commit your actions to the Lord. But how do you commit your actions to the Lord? You seek Jesus in all things. How do you seek Jesus in all things? You read his word, his Bible. When I was in high school or middle school, grade school, I heard the Bible explained as the B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. And you might be singing that yourself, but the B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me. And I pray it's the book for you. I'm reading a book right now by Zig Ziglar. It's called God's Way is Still the Best Way. And it's such a good book. He's got a story in there that I wanted to share with you. It's about a businessman who dreamed big. He had big goals and God gave him great success. Now throughout the book, there are different testimonies of people who had not only success in the world's eyes, but also, and more importantly, in God's eyes. He wrote specifically about a man named Dick Furman. And I would like to share a little bit of his story with you. He was an accomplished physician and a Wendy's franchise owner, starting up more than 65 new locations across America. He wrote that Dick believed, quote, real success, not success as many in our culture would define it, but a real success that satisfies comes only when you look to the Lord to direct your steps and let him use you in his service. That's on page 31 of that Zig Ziglar book, God's Way is Still the Best Way. He went on to write about how Dick matured in his faith by learning that the very best, most peaceful place for him to be was in the center of God's will for his life. He stopped setting self-serving goals and began to pray about each goal, asking God to close the door on any goal he set that did not fit into God's plan for his life. This is beautiful. And I want to challenge you with this same question to you. Answer this. Would you pray the same prayer for your life to God? Would you pray, Father, please close the door to any goal I write in this workbook that does not fit into your plan for my life. Lord, I pray to walk according to your will. I pray to do what you want me to do. And Lord, align my desires with your plans for my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. To break this down even more simply, Most mornings, I ask God what he wants me to wear for the day, and then I listen for what he draws me to in my closet. Sometimes I close my eyes and just imagine what God wants me to wear today. And I ask him, God, what do you want me to wear today? I also look at the forecast for the day and sometimes listen to the news to hear how the weather might feel on any given day. Sometimes I close my eyes and visualize walking into that place I know I will be going to for that day, and I try to visualize what God would have me wear into that room. God, what do you want me to wear today to shine your light? The same is true with everything else in our faith walk. With Jesus in everyday life, we should ask God for his direction in all things we want to say or do. This includes with our ambitions, or anything else. Seek God. Ask God for his advice. In a women's small group I'm in this summer, one of the ladies encouraged us there with this quote, saying, don't take advice from people you wouldn't want to trade places with. And I think that's a beautiful quote for our walk with Christ. 
as Christians, as believers, we want to be like Christ. We want to be imitators of Christ. 1 Corinthians 11, 1, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So beautiful. And so now the question is, do you trust God? Do you trust him with your future? Even if you have been through hard, unthinkable, sad, depressing times, maybe you've experienced loss that no one can imagine. Do you still trust God with your life? Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 in the NIV translation says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, which takes humility on our end, in all your ways, not some of your ways, but all of your ways, submit to him. Remember in the beginning about commit your actions to the Lord. Same here, submit to him. And Proverbs 3 verse 6 promises, he will make your paths straight. So I want to encourage you to trust Jesus wholeheartedly, as this proverb says, and that's a promise. As Christians, we should ask God what he wants for us to do, and we should also use the tools he has given us, like the Bible, to equip us with what he wants us to do while we wait for his return. Because Jesus came to this earth, he died for our sins, and he's coming back. God can do anything. We know from Luke 137 in the ESV translation, for nothing will be impossible with God. Can he give you the perfect outfit idea in a flash? Yes, he can do anything. But it's our duty as believers to humble ourselves daily to the call God has on our lives and to do what he has called us to do by pure obedience to him. Ephesians 4.1 in the ESV translation, one of my favorite verses, this verse has carried me through so many challenging times, but it says, and this is for you, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, this is Paul speaking, urge you, you listening, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have been called. You are God's handiwork created to do what he has gifted you to do while you get to live here on this earth. The breath you have in your lungs right now is a gift from God. It's a blessing. God made you in his image. I don't know what your story is, but if you're a believer, we know in Leviticus, we're told to walk with our heads held high in chapter 26, verse 13, because as believers in Christ, we know what he has done for us on the cross and we are his chosen people. First Peter 2, 9 ESV translation But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You have been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. You're living life on mission. Your life has meaning and purpose, no matter your position. I want to help you with this workbook to understand that God wants to use you for his divine supernatural purposes today. Ephesians 2.10 NIV translation. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. No matter your position, God gave you the ability to do your action or work for his glory. And if you love God, He is going to make things good for you. Why? Because of Romans 8, 28, which says, and this is for you. This is for your life if you love God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28 ESV translation. But here's where I want to challenge you to pause and reflect before we look ahead to make your vision board, write the vision, check your motives, and take action. I want to ask you wholeheartedly right now in the work you are currently doing, are you working to bring yourself glory or God glory? Are you decreasing your name and increasing God's name? 
See John 3.30. Or are you switching that verse up and instead increasing your name and decreasing God's name? Only you are going to know how to answer this truly. Because the true answer to this twisted question lies in your heart of hearts. I challenge you to ask God in prayer today, as soon as possible, to clean your heart. No matter how you answered this question above, are you decreasing your name and increasing God's name or increasing your name and decreasing God's name? John 3.30 says, he must become greater, I must become less. I want to challenge you to ask God to clean your heart. Pray this prayer with me. Father, create in me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Psalms 51, 10 ESV. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God is the beginning and he's the end. Look at history. If we fight trying to get the prize for ourselves and our selfishness and our glory, we are not going to win. Look at any story on Netflix about someone's biography where they have chosen their fame, their fortune, and their success. See how that has worked out for them. Look at their testimony and now hear a testimony of anyone who has come on the podcast and how God has redefined what rich means to them, how God has shown them what abundant life looks like and how God can renew your heart, give you a clean heart and get you driven to start living life on purpose for him. God is the beginning and the end. He's going to get the glory anyway. Romans eleven thirty six ESV. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. No matter what is happening today, God is going to get the glory. But will we surrender our lives to him by denying our lives, picking up our cross, and following him? We know this is what we have to do as believers because of Luke 9, 23 in the NLT translation when it says, Then he, who's Jesus, said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. This style of living in Luke 9, 23 is not how the world lives. The Christian lifestyle is not going to get you cool. The world is going to tell you, you do you, chase your dreams, you are enough. The world is going to encourage you to trust your heart. But my goal for you by the end of this workbook is for you to wholeheartedly trust Jesus alone, knowing your life has meaning and purpose today to broadcast his love no matter your position. This workbook is not about finding your truth. It's about seeking his truth, which is in the Bible. This workbook is about you learning more about God's commands, working with him as co-workers with Christ, and walking in his plans for your life, for his glory and your good. And I'm sure if you're listening to this, you want to walk in his will. You want to live out his plans for your life. And I want to help you with that. I want to encourage you to live that abundant life with Jesus. Your life has meaning and purpose today because of Jesus. But do you have faith in him to surrender your everything to God and serve a worthy king? You must have faith in God to trust him and do what he has promised you. Our faith is crucial. We know that from Hebrews eleven six, and it says in the ESV translation, and without faith, it's impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. This workbook is not about getting rewards. It's not about getting accomplishments. It's about remembering that God has plans for you. And as a believer in Jesus, we want to walk according to his ways and we want to work with him to shine his light and to broadcast his love. In one of my recent therapy sessions with Sarah Murko, who's been on the podcast before just recently, we talked about as a believer, your purpose is the same here on earth as it will be in heaven. 
Your purpose is to glorify God. How simple is that? Picture in your mind what glorifying God would look like here on earth if you were to start now. While you're here on earth, living and breathing, God wants to use you to bring others to Him. He wants you to glorify Him with your actions. I believe God has called each person to do good, meaningful, purpose-filled work for His glory. But I think we get distracted and we forget we're on a mission daily. I think we don't do what we have been sent to do on this earth because we get selfish. We get distracted. There's so much going on. We get busy. I can speak to this struggle personally, unfortunately. We have a chalkboard in our kitchen with the scripture 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10 written on it. I tell myself every year I'm going to change the verse on that chalkboard. But this passage speaks so deeply to me, to my heart, most mornings when I see it. Because while the commands are so simple, the worldly struggle is real. I want to read this scripture to you. And I pray it helps you in your walk with Christ. This is a teaching from Paul to Timothy. And it's so simple. It says in verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Verse 10, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Have you ever fallen away from your faith in Jesus? I pray you have not fallen away from your faith in Jesus. He sees you. He loves you. He made you. And he wants to work with you. He loves you. And so my question to you is right now in your position, are you doing good work? If what you're doing is sinning and your work is not good, my prayer for you is that you change your ways. If what you are doing in your work is sinning and your work is not good, my prayer for you is that God redefines what good work should look like in your life and for you to change your ways and your work. No matter how hard this change could be in your life, I believe a surrendered life to follow Jesus alone and serve his people wholeheartedly using your position, no matter if it's being a parent, spouse, or CEO, I believe God wants us to shine his light, not our own light, not what we think is love, but what God defines as love. If we want to know what love is according to God's word, we can find it in 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 7, which tells us love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Wow, you can call out what love is not just by these words. It's not irritable. It's not resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing. It rejoices with the truth. And the truth is the word of God. And so I pray that you rejoice over God's word. You rejoice over his truth. It is our truth. And I love just more descriptions on what is love because you want to broadcast God's love, not your love, what you think is love. His ways are higher than our ways. John 15, 13 says, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. First Peter 4, 8, above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. First John 4, 8, Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And I just want to tell you, God is for everyone. He is for everyone. He made you. He made you. No matter where you are or what you've done or what you look like, God made you. And 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14 says, Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong, Let all that you do be done in love. I love that because we can be strong and we can still act in love. 
because he is our firm foundation. Romans 5, 8. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. John 14, 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Broadcasting God's love is a choice. Do you want to live life on purpose for Jesus using the gifts, talents, and abilities he has given you? As believers in Jesus, we are called to walk out a spirit-led life, which is seen actively in someone who shows the genuine characteristics of what the Bible calls the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, through 23, which are defined as having love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. As believers in Jesus, we are called to be a light to a hurting, dark world and follow Jesus who is our light. See Matthew 5, 14 through 16. And I love Philippians 4, 8, where it talks about how we're called to focus on whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And when I just said those words, Did any pictures come to your mind? Whatever is true, noble, right, whatever is pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. Think about those wonderful things that you're visualizing. Friends, we want what we want and we desire what we desire, but that is not always right in God's eyes. I want to encourage you to choose God's ways. I want to encourage you to go to his word and read it like you need it. Again, in therapy, we talked about our desires and our wants. And the verse she said that came to her mind is Isaiah 59, eight through nine in the NIV translation. And I'd like to read it to you. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. God knows it all and thank God he does. So I want to challenge you in the dreaming and in the hoping, what are you focusing on? What are you hoping for? What are you dreaming about? I want to encourage you to first fix your eyes on Jesus. Colossians 3 verse 2 in the ESV translation, set your mind on things that are above not on things that are on earth. Another clarifying point I'd like to explain before you put pen to paper in this downloadable PDF is to explain to you the meaning of what it is to be called. And this is a really special part of this podcast. We're not going to include all of this in the PDF, but we are going to include some of it. So I want to explain what it means to be, quote, called. I first received this understanding about our calling as believers in a sermon on YouTube by one hour, one book, Ephesians. The pastor who gave the speech was a former pastor at Grace Church in Sebring, Florida, who also taught God's word at the Great Commission Bible Institute, also in Sebring. He goes by the name of Pastor Randy. In this one hour sermon through all of Ephesians, Pastor Randy talked about as a Christian, You have been chosen by God and given an inheritance from the Lord and that you have been adopted by God. And as his adopted child, he has put you first. You are God's child. And when we listened to Pastor Randy, I did edit this message up a little bit. Not a lot. I did take out a couple pieces of his lecture where he was talking to the students about a specific situation in the Bible. So this is in Ephesians Paul is the author. I do want to encourage you to listen to the full video. It's an hour long. It's on the book of Ephesians. It's called One Hour, One Book, Ephesians. And there is a link in the description of this podcast to Pastor Randy's full message. Here's Pastor Randy talking to his students at the Great Commission Bible Institute about how we must learn to walk as a believer and how we should look different from the world. Very important for us spiritually to understand something. Your identity has everything to do with how you behave. My father used to say, you're a smith. Other people can, you can't. They can quit, you can't, you're a smith. Your identity has everything to do with how you act when you understand who you are. 
Your call is your identity, and understanding your call roots your identity. And I want you to act the way you act because you are who you are. By the way, you can't act into being who you are. You act because of who you are. So chapter 4, 1 to 6, 9 moves to the second box. And in the second box, the issue is not your, just your call, but your conduct. And what you're going to see is that you were called to walk worthy in 4.1, to walk distinctly in verse 17 of chapter 4, to walk in love in, in verse 2 of chapter 5, to walk as children of light in chapter 5 verse 8, and to walk wisely in chapter 5 verse 15. Walk, 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 walk. In other words, you need to learn how to walk. The conduct of the believer comes on top of the call of the believer because when you are called, you change the way you are. So spiritually speaking, one of the things you had to do was you had to learn how to walk. Now, what's interesting to me is that verse one of chapter four in the beginning of that section says you've been given an identity. I need you to walk like you're in that identity. Walk worthy of that identity. Now, you need to understand that the scriptures are not trying to say to you that you somehow earned the position God gave you. But, but they are trying to say that because you have that position, you ought to walk a certain way. Let me say it this way. If you're a believer, I ought to be able to tell. If you're a believer, your lifestyle should show it. And so he says, I want you to do that. And what's the key issue in the first 10 or 12 verses of chapter 4 that he wants you to walk worthy of? How do you show it? You preserve the oneness, the unity of the body. One of the things that you had to learn as a Roman citizen is that Rome rules the world and we are one. And one of the things you have to learn as a believer is that there's a circle there's us and them, and the us is the believer, and the them is everyone else. And our objective is to try and draw them into being us just as we were drawn in one time, just as we once were at enmity. Now we're to be drawn in. It's interesting because in chapter 4, verse 17, the second of those walks was this whole distinct walk no longer as the Gentiles walk in the emptiness of their minds. Verse 19, given over to sensuality. You didn't learn Christ in that way. Verse 20, lay aside the old self. Verse 22, be renewed in your spirit. Put on the new self. Verse 24, he's trying to say there's a distinctiveness about the way you carry yourself in sensuality and in purposefulness. It, it is fine that unbelievers live an unpurposed life. It is not fine that believers live an unpurposed life. And finally, you get down to, by the way, one of the ways you have to do that is if you're a thief, quit. If you've been raging in anger, stop. Get a job. Look at verse 29 of chapter 4. Don't let any unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth, but edify with what you say. Don't grieve the Spirit of God. Let bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander be put away. Malice, put away. Be kind to one another. The issue is this. If you're going to be a believer, you're called to act distinctly as a believer in your sensuality and in your purposefulness and in the way that you handle one another. Put off that other stuff. It belongs to another life. You don't belong there anymore. Well, in the same way, he goes on and says that we're to walk in love just like Christ did, that impurity and immorality, those things belong to another life. We're not to be partakers with them, but we're to walk in love. But he says, not in lust, in love. Not in what the world calls love in every popular song, but real love. We're to walk in that. And then he goes on to chapter 5, verse 8 and says, stop walking like you're stumbling around in the dark. Walk as children of light. I love, I love verse 10, chapter 5, verse 10. That, that part of my life is trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. In other words, when I first start, I don't know what makes God happy, but I, I go on this journey to learn what makes God happy. And the important thing is that in order to do that, I have to walk wisely in verse 15, making the most of my time discerning the will of the Lord. And that won't be discerned by anesthetizing myself into drunkenness. That will be discerned by 
being sensitive to his spirit and being subject to one another in verse 21. And then he goes on and talks about that subjection. Well, probably the best way I learn it is what chapter 5, verse 1 says, imitation. Did, did you ever go to one of those banquets? When I first went on my first cruise ship, they had so many pieces of silverware or cutlery, I had no idea what I was supposed to use to eat what. So here's what I did. I watched people that had been there before. If you don't know what to do, just kind of sit there and talk and just keep your eyes out. Oh, that's the fork you use for that. They had these little things to get these little snails out of the shells. I never saw these things before. This is a weird instrument. I thought they were going to do surgery on each other at the table. They had this, like, they bring out this big, long thing, like, you know, a guy's going to come out and say, you know, uh, scalpel, you know. It's <laughs> like, so, uh, you don't know what this stuff is for. And here's the important thing. What was exciting for me was if I watched somebody else, I could do this without looking like an idiot. Okay? Well, chapter 5, verse 1 says, listen, be imitators of God as beloved children. But I think one of the things that you have to learn is even after you've been given a statement of powers, you don't know how to act yet, so watch what others are doing. And then he goes on and he, and he talks about that imitation. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a classroom and it was a learning environment. And I know if you're here listening to this podcast still, you want to learn and you want to grow closer to Christ. And I want to equip you in the best way I know how to do what you do for Jesus because of the love that you have for him. And the only way I know to do that is to tell you more about him. In my mom's devotional study Bible by Zondervan, NIV translation, it had these bullet points listed on page 1286, defining who God says you are as a believer in Jesus Christ. These bullet points are true promises from God. These are promises to you from God that you can say yes and amen to. See 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. I encourage you to say these bullet points out loud. And for extra fun, you can say them in the mirror. As a Christian, these are some clarifying verses about who you are in Christ Jesus. I am made in the image of God. See Genesis chapter 1. Verses 26 through 27. I am a child of God. See John chapter 1, verse 12. I am a temple, a dwelling place of God. His spirit lives in me. See 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. I am one of God's holy people. See Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. I am righteous and holy. See Ephesians 4, 24. I am chosen and appointed by God to bear his fruit. See John 15, 16. I am God's workmanship, his handiwork, born anew in Christ to do good works. Ephesians 2, 10. I am chosen of God, holy and dearly loved. See Colossians 3, 12. I will resemble Christ when he returns. See 1 John 3, 1 through 2. Psalms 139, verse 14. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Deuteronomy 14.2 I am God's treasured possession. In my study Bible, the author also encouraged me to substitute my name at the beginning of each sentence. Try it. It's powerful. And if you want to go back to these bullet points, feel free to download the free PDF in the description of this podcast. This is all on page 9 of the printout. On a hard day, my hope is that you go back to this workbook and remember who you are in Christ and that you remember what he has made you to do today for his glory. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are God's treasured possession. And I pray in Jesus' name that you will do what God has called you to do because you love him and you're called according to his purpose. And if you are a Christian, your identity is in Christ because you are a child of God. You see, for the longest time when I looked in the mirror, I thought life was about me being happy, looking good, and being successful according to the world's view. But the more I learn about God and what I want you to walk away with from this workbook is the understanding that God gave Pastor Randy through the book of Ephesians that your identity is your calling. As he said, quote, your identity has everything to do with how you behave. This understanding that as a believer, your identity is the same thing as your calling could be a game changer for your life. And I hope it is. This world wants to tell you you're called to be a superstar, you're called to be super skinny, or you're called to be super tan. And friends, I want to tell you the adventure in life isn't in what the world sees as success, 
but the adventure is in the success that God gives you. God provides the increase. I love that quote from Mark Batterson's book in Win the Day. It says, don't worry about the outcomes. Focus on the inputs. We plant and water, but God gives the increase. Let me ask you a simple question. If you plant carrot seeds, what do you get? The easy answer is carrots. How about pumpkin seeds? The obvious answer is pumpkins. What if you don't plant anything? You might think the answer is nothing, but you'll actually get weeds. The simple truth is this. You cannot break the law of sowing and reaping. It will make or break you. And the takeaway from this quote is that God provides the increase. Don't worry about the outcomes. Focus on your good inputs. Do that good work. Plant and water and trust God. God is the one who gives the increase in the first place. Trust him to provide for you. I had a friend tell me once that we're all just walking each other home. And our home is in heaven. Our home is eternity. God knows the plans he has for us. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans to give us hope and a future. And if our calling is the same thing here on earth as it is in heaven, friends, we're just walking each other home. And I want to take you with me. Let's travel together on this adventure to our heavenly home. Let's live life unashamed. We are not Bible thumpers. We are acting out of the grace in which God has given us. We are acting out of the love and kindness that God has shown us. Our goal is to walk everyone home with us by broadcasting God's love for his glory. And as we wrap up this audio recording, I want to encourage you to go to the PDF and download it, print it off, and work on this workbook. Because the first page, it's on page 11 of you actually filling out this workbook, is you listing out your vision board. Before you make your big, beautiful, creative vision board, first I want you to ask God what he wants you to do this year for his glory. And as you are thinking and praying about your vision board, I encourage you to filter each goal through this verse, which is Psalms 37 verse four. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And ask yourself this question with each goal you write, are you going to use this as a tool for God or a toy for yourself? Are you going to use this as a tool for God or a toy for yourself? This is the question my friend who's a certified life coach down in Orlando, Florida asked guest in episode 82 Her name is Lisa Landis. And I just want to play this quick clip for you. It's a little bit more than a minute long. As she reminds us, all we have is from God. You know, my dad has always taught us and everything that we own physically, whether it's your house, your car, you know, something that you want to buy, whatever. Do you use everything that you have in your life as a tool or a toy? Mm. Because even the fun things, it doesn't say you can't own a fun thing. It doesn't say you can't own a boat. If you've worked hard and you've earned a boat, buy a boat. But are you also using it as a tool for God? Amen. A vessel for Jesus. Everything in your life should be used as a tool for God because then you understand that the ownership is not yours. Amen. I say this to my kids every day about our house. We get to manage this house. We own our home, et cetera, but we get to live in this house and manage this house because God has asked us to be here to use it as a tool for others. Yeah. Everything. Because what does that take away? It suddenly takes away the sense of feeling like you can brag about something or that you've earned something or that you have something, a spotlight on you for how great you are. Yeah. Then everything you are, you understand was given to you because of who God is mm. and it's he's to be used through you, right? Amen. I love Lisa and she was so gracious with her time and for sharing what God has on her heart. Lisa's doing the good work and I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Let's do good work for Jesus. Let's put in good inputs. Focus on the inputs. Don't worry about the outcomes. God provides the increase as Mark Batterson wrote in Win the Day. As you go forward from here and make your vision board, I encourage you to ask yourself, if you get this item or make this accomplishment, are you going to use it as a toy for selfish reasons or use this new position or new accolade, whatever this new thing is, are you going to use it for God's glory? In the worksheet on page 11, I encourage you to use the numbers below and write out what you would like to accomplish or do. No matter if you have large or small dreams on your heart, I want you to dump out everything that's in your mind, everything that's in your heart 
to experience, do, or achieve. As we close this podcast, I want to leave you with the last page of this workbook. It talks about the action steps to broadcast his love. And I want to leave you with this scripture. It's from Zechariah 4.10 in the NLT translation. It says, do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. So don't be afraid to start small because the Lord is rejoicing to see this good work begin. And I want to challenge you to write a prayer to God, asking God to align each item on your vision board with his plans for your life. I want to encourage you to write a prayer to God specifically for each item you listed on your vision board, asking him for his direction and will for your life. You can pray simply for God to open or close doors for you if it's his will for you to accomplish each line on your vision board. Ask God for his wisdom, direction, and clarity for what he wants you to do for his glory. And my prayer for you, as I am so thankful that you're here, that you've downloaded. I pray if you're encouraged by this episode, you share it with your friends. I pray you download the PDF and that it encourages you to do what you do for Jesus, even in the small things. And as you go out from here into your mission field, wherever you're broadcasting God's love, no matter if it's the grocery store, your school, the beach, the hospital, wherever you're going today, whatever you do, I pray that you work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Colossians 3, 23 through 24. Thank you again for downloading this podcast, and I hope you download the PDF file. I pray this drew you closer to Christ alone and nothing else drew you closer to Christ. And Lord willing, we will talk to you on the podcast next Tuesday. Have a great week and God bless you. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you will also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy, Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy, Haiti, and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders to transform communities. God bless you guys, and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn on the internet at laureloakin.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest. <laughs>